Thanks for watching Living on the Cheap and trying to figure out what today's topic is five free things to do. Free activities? Free things. Yeah, sure. Keep watching. So today's topic is a collaboration. Thank you to uh, the Facebook group. If you want to join, you may. It is moderated, just so you know. So it may take some time for your uh, request to be approved. You can join out on Facebook. It's called How to Collaborate with Your YouTube Friends. So hope, uh, hope to see you there. My mouth is not working today. Anyway, today's topic is five free or almost free fun activities to do. So I wrote them down and I actually came up with more than five. Oh, check me out. I'm on a roll. That's probably because I took a few days off. Sorry about that, guys. My husband was on holidays. Couldn't get the videos done. Just couldn't do it. Anyhow, number one, which is one of my favorites, is go for a walk. How hard is it to do? If you've already got these puppies attached, feet, not the shoes, you can go for a walk anywhere. So I wrote a few ideas of where to go for a walk. One could be in the forest. Actually, we've got a forest very close. Well, not a real forest, but a small park forested area in the city. A beach, a park. Uh, how about a downtown? If you don't go downtown regularly, maybe go over there. Or do some sightseeing in your own uh, city. Sometimes it's neat to see some little areas of your city that maybe you don't know very well. So that's what we do. Also, one thing I like to do is when you're traveling, try to find some free walking tours. Um, some are unguided and some are guided. Sometimes it's just a pamphlet from the visitor center of that neighborhood and you could do a free walking tour. Number two. I was gonna say go for a walk, but I just said that, didn't I? More coffee. Picnic at the park. This is something I used to do all the time when we were dating, and I've carried it on now with my children. We usually pack up some sandwiches, some fruit or vegetables, and off we go. Throw it all into a backpack, and we just go to some park, any park, anywhere. It doesn't even have to be one that we haven't been to. We'll go to a park that we always go to, but maybe we haven't picnic there. And we'll do a couple of picnics, at a couple different parks every summer. So usually we do about four to five uh, picnics, strictly just picnics. We're not going swimming, we're not doing anything else. We're just having a picnic, really. Number three, go swim at the beach. The best place to go swimming is a local lake, beach, pond, all free, free, free. Uh, number three, I think, four, I don't know, I forgot what I'm on now. Backyard water park. This is great if you have little ones. Mine are older now, so we don't do it anymore, but we used to do it. We would have a toddler pool, a slip and slide, um, what else? Oh, sprinklers. If you have um, a trampoline, set up the sprinkler under the trampoline. That adds a little bit of more fun for them. And the kids used to love it. We would have the neighborhood kids come over too. And it'd be our little, like, Summerland water park in the backyard. It was awesome. So if you already have these things like a slip and slide and a toddler pool and a trampoline and a maybe a sprinkler that you only use for watering your lawn, use a sprinkler for fun for the kids. The kids love it. It's really surprising to me. The next one I like to do, and I still do this to this day, is go on a bike ride. I will drag out my kid, my youngest, and we will go on a bike ride. Um, we usually save this for summertime activities. It's still kind of spring here. So it's a little bit cold on your hands unless you have gloves. She doesn't like to wear gloves when she's bike riding. So it can be a bit of a hassle with her, but I do love bike riding in the summer. I'm targeting these mostly to summer activities because it's spring going into summer soon. So that's why the activities I've listed are mostly summer activities. Um, the, what did I, oh, ha, this is my husband. I asked my husband, what do you think? And he repeated most of my ideas, but this was one he came up with on his own. And it is something he loves to do. And it's to go driving in what we call the big house neighborhoods. So uh, we live, you know, middle income, neighborhood, average housing. And we like to go into the richer areas where they've got mansions and guest houses. Or sometimes the hedges are so big you don't even see the house. And we like to drive around those and just look at how far the fence line is from one end to the other and just comment on how big the properties are and we can imagine how big the houses are if we can't see them. Some of them we can see the rooftops or just the four or five car garage with the apartment above, but it's sometimes nice to just drive around and check that out. 
So my last idea, which is kind of two different ideas, but they're kind of the same, but not really. If you have a smartphone already, this is a totally free activity. Download an app. I'm just going to reach over for my phone because I wasn't smart enough to have it on my lap while I was recording this. And download, this is a free app that you can download. There's two of them there. One is geocaching and one is Munzee. I don't know if you can see with the reflection. There you go. Geocaching.com. G-E-O-C-A-C-H-I-N-G. It's a treasure hunt using GPS from your phone with the GPS satellites, of course, in the sky. And you're finding treasures. They're all over the world. There's over 3 million of them hidden all over our wonderful planet Earth. And it costs you nothing to do. All you have to do is sign up with a free account. So give yourself a code name. Uh, my name is Scrap Happens. If you see me anywhere, just let me know. Say, hey, Scrap Happen, hi. Um, and then you find, say you are going for that walk in the park. Check out your geocache website or app. And it will direct you through the GPS uh, direction thing. And then you have to, when you're within three feet, you have to start using your eyes and your hands and find boxes or containers of all sorts. And inside some is just a log book with a pencil. Sometimes there's goodies. If you find goodies, remember, take one, leave one. Don't just take and leave nothing. That doesn't work, okay? The other uh, game I like to play, and this is a little bit newer to me. I uh, signed up a few years ago, but I never really played it until this month, the month of April. You're gonna see this, sorry, it'll be May 1st, but I was only started playing it in, in the month of April. Told you my mouth, I need more coffee. And that is Munzee, M-U-N-Z-E-E. -E. There's a website.com. There's also an app for smartphones. Uh, I don't use iPhone, so I have no idea, but I do know it's on the Google Play Store. And again, it's a free app. Again, you have to sign up with your own uh, tagline, tagline, name, whatever. And again, I'm Scrap Happen. Seems to work on everything, so I have the same name. Yes. Anyhow, um, go on there and what you're looking for are QR codes and you use your phone to scan the QR codes and as you find more and more you level up and it's kind of interesting how that works with uh, geocaching is a little different it uses the same idea it's GPS um, identification or not identification but GPS location device um, the two games are using the same technology but for different things so in geocaching you're actually looking for something in Munzee, you're actually only looking for a QR code. You're not necessarily looking for a box or an item to open. I keep saying box, but it's not always box. Sometimes it's, you know those toy rats on Halloween that you open up and it's a candy jar? It might be something like that. Or it could be a fake pine cone that you open up and there's a log book inside. A log book is pretty much anything that you can write your name on and the date. And yeah, you just log them that you found them. You score up that way on geocaching. Munzee, you score up by finding QR codes. I found the Munzee is a little bit easier, only that I don't have to stick my hands up into creepy, gross, dark holes. I'm kind of a wuss at that. Yeah. I'm good at finding them under bushes, though. Hmm. Huh. Anyhow, I will make a future video on probably both of those activities later on. I'm just waiting for it to be warm enough and have enough time and maybe have a partner to go with because it's always fun with somebody else. But those are my ideas for fun. Five. Five fun free activities. You count. How many did I say? Because I'm sure it was more than five, but that was the title, so I'm going with it. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you soon. Don't forget to subscribe here and click here for another video. Talk to you soon.